You know, a lot of people say they want to be in the prophetic sense, but they got to keep the salt. Because if the salt loses its savor, or what I like to say, if the salt loses its savior, what good is it? You don't get a light and just put it anywhere. But you put it on top so that it can light up the room. And that's what we got to start doing. Not just letting our light light the room, but make sure it's hitting everybody in the room. See, if we're going to be the body of Christ, it's time to start saying what God says about certain people. Not just serving every person. The peculiar people. To the men and women of God. Especially when you know they're going through something. You know, and not just saying something, but doing something. But what you say is what you're going to do. And what you're going to do is because you already said you were going to do it. See, if you see a person going through, through troubles in school or going through troubles with the word of God, then it's time to uplift them and say, hey, look, we, we got Bible study. We, we, got, we, 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 we have ways for, to, to, to help get this word interpreted to you. We can show you different translations of the word of God. It doesn't have to be this hard. When do you have time? Well, see, a person that's really hungry for God, they'll make time. It's time for the body of Christ to start saying, you know what, brother? I see you blessed and highly favored. I see just checks coming to you right now. Just give God some praise. As long as you apply yourself and get in school with God, is showing that you need to do, then you're going to be successful. See, a lot of people, they want to get the blessings, but they don't want to follow the commands. But today, that stopped. Hallelujah, because God is looking for an obedient people. Hallelujah, he's going to make sure their righteousness is exalted, this nation. And that those that are righteous are getting exalted. Hallelujah. So prophecy, the prophetic, hallelujah. It comes to you in, in, in dreams and visions. Dreams and visions. Solomon, whenever he first received anything from God, God visited him in a dream. When Daniel, before he became the great man of God that he was, God showed him how to reveal and, and, and tell the secrets of a dream. If you're not having any dreams or visions, you need to talk to God. Because it means there's something going on in your life. The reason why God talks to people in dreams is because finally he says, I finally got you to shut up. Hallelujah. I finally got you in a place where you can hear everything I'm going to say to you. Prophecy. Prophecy is when you pray for somebody and you don't go back on what you're praying about. Mm -hmm. Father God, I ask you to bless them, Lord. And then you don't go to their face and say, you know what, you get on my nerves. <laughs> then why did you pray for me? Yeah. There's a lot of people praying for you that you don't even know about. And see, it's the amazing thing, that's the amazing thing about God is that he's going he's gonna to show you so much, so many things. When you get to heaven, he's going to reveal so much. That's why it's your business. Make it your business to get in God's business to get to heaven. Amen. So that you can see some of the stuff that needs to be shown to you. Because a lot of people, I, 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 I know it's a lot of people that's praying for you. That that if you if you just if you just you know just just humble yourself and, and obey God, those prayers will come to life. You know, not just the fact that you can go to heaven and see them prayers, but the thing is. A lot of people, they, 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 they get prayed for, and then they just go on about life like it was, it was nothing. See, if you want to get prayed for, it's time to start living out that prayer to the best of your ability. See, property is, prophecy, it sees the potential in you and tries to draw it out. You know, the, the prophetic, the Bible says to despise not prophesy. Because when you're despising prophesying, you're despising the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. 
You know, speaking in tongues, is, it says speaking in tongues is a way of, of prophesying. When you speak in tongues, God says you should act for the interpretation of what you spoke in tongues so that you can, you can understand what's going on. The Bible says when you speak in tongues, you're speaking not unto men, but unto God. And so what happens when you speak in tongues, God speaks back to you. And in doing that, when you, when you speak in tongues, God allows you, it says that when you speak in the spirit, your, your understanding becomes unfruitful. But when you pray, in your, your, when you pray, your understanding becomes fruitful. When you speak in, when you speak in the spirit, you speak in tongues, your understanding becomes unfruitful. But when you pray in English, when you pray in your regular language, your understanding becomes fruitful. So this is what I've learned. When you speak it in tongues, if you want to edify, the Bible says it, it says, it says, uh, uh, build up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, it's like you, you're going into a, a, a different, a different secret place, a different room, a different, even though you're in the room, but you're not in the room. So what you're doing is, is, if your mind becomes unfruitful when you're speaking in tongues, and you're under, you're under, if, if your mind becomes unfruitful, your understanding becomes unfruitful, it says lean out into your own understanding. So if your understanding becomes unfruitful, then God can speak. Sometimes you go in a, in a place where it's all unfruitful. You go into a room, a place of unfruitfulness. So that's the best time to speak in tongues. So that when you're doing that, when you're speaking in tongues, that unfruitfulness won't bother you. But yet you're praying in the spirit. And the Bible says that tongues serve as a sign for the unbeliever. Prophecy serves for the believer. So when you're speaking in tongues, the unbeliever is looking at you yet being unfruitful. But they don't know what you're saying because their word, the words that's in your mouth don't make no sense. So as they see you speaking in tongues, they say, what's going on? I didn't know you spoke another language. And it's not that I'm, I'm scaring you or I'm acting crazy, but now I got your attention. I'm speaking in tongues because the Holy Spirit has given me this heavenly language. And you can have it too. And not only that, the Bible says that when you speak in tongues, you get, you get a revelation, you get a knowledge, you get a doctrine. You get a prophetic word. And so you want to have all that to help that person receive God. How many times do you know that when you ride down the street and you can't ever get where you're going unless you see a sign? That's what tongues is. Tongues is a sign for the unbelief. So when they can see that sign, now they can get where they need to go. But some people won't ever see that sign until they see the word of truth that is in you. The more you speak in tongues, the more prophetic you become. Why? Because you're not speaking to men, you're speaking to God. That's what the heavenly language is for. But prophecy, it starts even with praise and worship. Prophecy starts with praise and worship, edification, exhortation, and comfort. It starts with you knowing exactly who you are and what God said that you can have. When you, when you create an atmosphere of praise, you know what I want to let everybody, everybody just say something good about somebody today. That's a form of prophecy. The saints, the saints in my book and my Bible, in the same book y'all read, they would not let a disciple leave their area. They would not let them leave their surroundings if they didn't, if they didn't go comfortably. Hallelujah. If they did not feel a comfort. Let's, let's go. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Go to uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 4. Now see, Paul and Silas was going through something. Praise will bring you out. The prophetic is in you as a praise unto God. When you are praising, it's, uh, it's also as well as the prophetic, edification, exhortation, and comfort. When you, when you are praising God, you're, 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 you're causing the goodness of God to just flow all around you, to, to stir up all over you. Now, how much more, if, you, if you're in favor with God, you should also be in favor with man. And if you've got 
nothing to say good to man. How can you have something good to say to God? He says, if you don't love your brother, how can you say you love God? That's how prophecy works. Prophecy says, I can see what's, what's killing you, and I command it to stop in Jesus' name. Now, let me show you how to get right. <clears throat> now, the disciples, they were going through something. Paul and Silas was, was getting was getting whipped for, for believing in Jesus Christ. A lot of people in the body of Christ are getting whooped by even other saints for believing in the way that they believe in Jesus Christ. That's a sad thing when you, you tell someone, I, I, you, you believe too much more than I do. So you, you know what, you need to sit in that chair. You know, but this is what was going on in, in, the, in the book of Acts chapter 16 and 17. Paul and Silas was, was in, in verse 25, I'm going to go there real quick. Verse, 20, verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now, these, these men, these men were locked up in prison because they believed in God. But they received a punishment for that. They got beaten. It says they beat them. They beat them so, so just, just, just horrible. And then they were locked up. Now watch this. In verse 40, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. You see that? Thank God there's some, some many women of God that won't let you go until you get comfortable. You know, we got to start reading body language of people. Sometimes you can just read the body language. Why, why your shoulders are so drooped down? Why your head is so low? You know, those are people that need to be comfortable. The Bible says prophecy serves for edification, exhortation, and comfort. See, that's why the power of God was so strong back there. It's because compassion wasn't a hard thing to find. You know? But yet, compassion wasn't a hard thing to find because these men and women of God back then wasn't afraid to stand up for what they believed in. They weren't, they weren't afraid to be made a show open. They weren't afraid to go on the Piggly Wiggly and the Wayne Dixie and say, I'm a man of God and somebody needs Jesus today. So they wasn't afraid to, to go into the club and to the bar and say, y'all know this ain't right. Not to be sitting there pointing a finger at them. But some people are in there and they don't know there's a better way until you comfort them. Until you comfort them. They don't know there's a better way. Because the majority of people that are in prison is an 87% ratio of men that's in prison without fault. Because they haven't been comfortable. They haven't been comfortable. It reminds me when, when, the, when Mary was washing Jesus' feet before his burial. She was washing his feet. And it, was a, she, it says he washed her with her, her tears and wiped it with her hair. Judas said, what are you doing? What's all this smell? And he broke an alabaster box. She, it said it was precious and costly. And she, she spit that stuff and, and, and wiped it on his feet. They gave him all these, 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 these forms of comfort. See, the, 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 the child was, was dead, and the woman needed to be comforted. God, and Elijah said, give me the child. Me and this, this child that's asleep is going to go see God to wake him up. It's time for some people that needs to be comforted. Hallelujah. Every man and woman of God needs comfort. Praise you, Jesus. We just thank you right now, Father God. Hallelujah. We just bless your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, right now for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for comforting us. God knew that we needed comfort so much that he sent it to comfort, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He sent the comforter. If no one has a relationship with God, if they don't if they don't know the Holy Spirit, then you haven't been getting comfort. If you haven't been having communion with the Holy Spirit, 